kind of the teacher who has created that interest in you, motivation in you, and, uh, and, and that gives you the focus and everything. Right. He gave us a mm. preview of what you had mm. talked about ah, today, ah. last Saturday. Okay. So when you explained the very same thing we learned from our guru, ah. it was crystal clear, mm. the privity and the nivarti. Ah. When I first sat down and he was explaining, didn't really get it. I went home, again the Shravanam, read whatever he taught in the class. But then when you talked about it, the Sambandha, what you said, it clicks. <coughs> what is the privity and what is the nivarti, you know, the uh, Vidha Marga. So how privity becomes the means of nivarti? Nivarti should be done in such a manner that privity results in a nivarti. Right. Then that's a, that's a real art. Right. After all, the river keeps running and running, not to keep running, so that ultimately she is free from running. <laughs> Similarly, all pravrutti is that, isn't that the Vedas always want to keep you going and going? No, that should carry out in such a manner that you have people who need for pravrutti. That is, that's, this is a unique, there is Vedangan's con, uh, contribution here. All this is Shankara, it is going to be asked. Somebody else. I guess uh, you can call it the Vedanta tradition and everything. For us, uh, you know, he is there, but uh, this distinction of uh, Anubandha Chatushta being different, yeah. of Karmakarna and Jnana Kanda is, is uh, just an excellent, outstanding. Yeah, absolutely, thing. Yeah, absolutely. And so, what do the Vedas teach us? Basic to basic differences. Mm. Then Vedas teach, we perform karma, and it's then karma is a means of attaining what is not attained. Mm. So life is a process of attaining what is not attained. That's what Karma Kanda says. He says, no, we have jnanam, so attainment of what is already attained. That makes a lot of difference right. in your orientation. Mm -hmm. That I have to attain something which is not attained is one orientation of the mind, but in order to own up what is there is a different orientation. In one, there is a, 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 a comfort and consolation in the mind. It's my nature. It will happen today or tomorrow. If it's Svarga, which has to be attained, you don't know any number of obstacles can be there between two things separated in time and space. Here, we, even Devutas cannot bring obstacles. So that, it's the same, you know, I mean, uh, in a, in a uh, what's a poetic way, but the, that nobody can bring obstacle to moksha because it's your own nature. All this is clarity. Must have been there earlier, but we get from Shankaracharya. Although our Swami did not like Shankar Vaish. Shankar Vedanta expression he did not like. Yeah, you know Shankar Vedanta? I know. So once, <laughs> once he said that in class, like, you see, everybody is going. <laughs> no, Shankar Vedanta. Shankar Vedanta is fine. Shankar Vedanta. Shankar Vedanta. He didn't like it. Shankar Vedanta. He said, no, no, this is Upanishad. You know, Vedanta is not Shankaracharya. But then scholars believe that this is Shankara's mother. That's scholars believe. Because uh, he, he, he gave the vision. The teacher gives the vision. And he gives vision of what the Vedas are teaching. But our Swami doesn't like that. It is traditional. So his vision, then there is a question. Then it becomes Pagrusha and stuff like that. So it must be Paramparaya. So what Swami refutes also as a reason. Mm. Why does he refute? Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise uh, you think that uh, it seems to be also you no. Know, mm. Because um, some basic mm. principles are mm. there. Mm. And so we must adhere to those principles. There is not a person saying, he is not Paul It's is Anandi Parampara. It's a link, mm. not the beginning. So Shankar Vaj or Shankar Vaj, you know. Shankar Vedanta. This is Vedanta, not Shankar Vedanta. Vedanta. <laughs> there is some physics that Shankara <coughs> Vedanta or Shankar Bhashyam was based on what he learned from Govinda yes, Bhagavad, Bhagavad Pada and their gurus as well. So a lot of it is also inherited by him. 
Every guru has to be shishya, otherwise we don't accept that guru. In our tradition, we don't accept a guru who, is not, who doesn't have a guru. So in Rishikesh, uh, when you go to Viksha, they ask you. And one of these is, who is your guru? So old Mahatma used to write, Swami so and so, guru so and so. So Swami Tarananda Giri, guru such and such. So they write along with it, like we write our father's name. They write guru's name also. And so it is, uh, a guru must, it must be parampara, not something new. Otherwise it's one of those many things, it becomes a cult. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like, oh, you are from that guru. <laughs> no, in the music, they ask, ah. who is your teacher? Ah. And then, oh, that one. Oh, that ah. I can see. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> like, Gurus also have, uh, naturally, uh, some are more famous than others, and more acclaimed than others. So it's going to happen. Swamiji, hmm. this morning in the Bhashya, you said uh, Krishna is apparent human form, not I mean, beyond Maya, so he is an apparent human form, not real human form. But his actions are real, so there is real karma, real karma pala. If the karma pala doesn't attach to him because he is beyond Maya, where does the karma pala go? First of all, you said that his form is apparent, then you accept it. And karma is real, how do you say karma is real? Karma is also can be apparent, is not? After all, there is an actor. He is really acting as, I mean, you know, effectively acting as a beggar. So to all audience, looks like the real beggar there. With his appearance only. So, Janma Karma Chame Divyam. My Janma also is Divya, and Karma also is Divya. They appear to be born, but not really. Appear to do things, but not really. In any case, to answer your question, forget, even Lord Krishna is, of course, a different thing, but anybody, like a wise person also, seems to perform a lot of karma, but it is not karma that binds, it is kartrutva that binds. Mm-hmm. That I didn't, I am doing this karma. Yeah. That is what binds. That, that one does, that wise person doesn't have. So, therefore, uh, gata sangasya muktasya, Jnana vasi chetra, yajna ya charata karma, samagram praviniyate. His karma is for yajna. It's a, there is no individuality in there. Lord Krishna explains all this in fourth chapter in, in quite detail. Neva kinchit karma yate, yukto manyeta tattvavi. The fifth chapter says also, the wise person says, I don't know anything. He does everything. Question, Shulman, he sees, hears, thinks, talks, walks, eats like everything, and talks also. And he says, I don't talk. I don't do anything, but you are doing. It, to say that I don't talk, you have to talk. Is it not so? <laughs> then who, who talks? Who comes and acts? I don't like that. In my presence, actions take place. Sense organs interact with sense objects. That's what we see. We, we, then we presume that this is done by that person. Well, that is our assumption. That's our interpretation. What we see is only eyes, seeing, <coughs> speech, talking. That's all we perceive. Then we go a step further and say, he spoke. In our case also, that I'm talking. Organ of speech is talking. But I say, I am talking, now that's my personal thing, to identify with organ of speech and then brand myself as a speaker. You need not do that. Because that's a product of your interpretation, not a reality. He's a retired li- attorney. attorney, so he's, <laughs> <laughs> he always teases him, he, he always uh, questions. Some arguments. 